Now as Christians, we have something special. God gives us something that the world can't give and the world can't take away. How many know that? Listen, it doesn't matter what presidential candidate was elected on January 20th, right? right. right. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, some of you may be a little discouraged by that. As a matter of fact, in the last couple of days, I'm pretty disappointed at what I'm seeing so far. Mm. All right? Mm. Not here to talk about that. Mm. But what I will say is that we've gotten some great Bernie Sanders memes as a result. <laughs> I can't imagine my life without a Bernie Sanders <laughs> meme at this point. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. Things are going crazy. Things are not normal. We are, we, as a church, we're trying to pack these chairs, uh, pack these you know, seats, get as many people as, and now we're limiting people from coming in here. And you, hey, when you come, stay away. It really messes with the whole definition of what the uh, Ecclesia is, how we need to come together, support, comfort, and fellowship. So I want to encourage you, even in these challenging times, to go over and above. Even if that means online, if it means making a phone call, whatever it is, make the most of every opportunity. We need one another. What do we do in these troubled times? We need to learn how to trust in Jesus and recognize that the Holy Spirit is supporting us. How many of you have ever been uh, uh, in a place um, where you were weighed down by the world, right? The weight of the world, the weight of situations. And when I mean that, I don't mean you're having a bad day. Somebody took your parking spot, ate the less. Sesame Seed Bagel. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when your thoughts are overwhelming and it's weighing down on your mind. Have you ever tried to go to sleep and you can't because you got stuck? And then you wake up after a good eight hours sleep and the first thing before you even become fully conscious is you're thinking about your problem. It's just almost like uh, subconscious. You know, it just starts to overtake your life and, and it weighs you down and then throughout the day, you could be doing fine one minute and then the next minute it's like, oh man, you're burdened. What do you do in these moments? We are experiencing this right now. We're going through some things personally. We're going through some things professionally, you know, and, uh, and some things individually, you know. And we are learning to trust in the Lord. And a lot of times, when I say you have to trust in the Lord, a lot of times he doesn't want you to do anything. I don't even know what that means. How many are fixing, right? There's a problem, you're going to fix it. There's an issue, you're going to address it. I don't know how to pray and leave it alone. Today, the title of the message is the Holy Spirit support. Holy Spirit support. And I have uh, just three points I want to run by you and work the details out. And I want you to leave encouraged and your mind uh, fed and your spirit fed today. All right, so the first thing I want to talk to you about today is how the Holy Spirit Comforts. I think we've all been in a place where we've needed comfort before. If you haven't prior to 2020, then uh, definitely this last year took care of that, right? And uh, so far, uh, I'm not seeing 2021 that much better just yet. Uh, we're believing God for some good things, but hey, it's been difficult, right? Uh, sometimes we need to be comforted. Comfort means the easing or alleviation of a person's feeling of grief or distress. Sometimes it's hard to find the relief that we need. And let me give you another little nugget of truth that you have to be aware of, and I want to make sure that you understand. When you're going through a spiritual battle, a spiritual problem, the solution is not in the natural. Uh -huh. Oftentimes, we're going through a spiritual battle, and we think around the gospel is going to cure it. Going through a spiritual battle, we think, uh, go get our nails done. Right? Get a massage, go sit in a hot tub, well, that's going to make us feel a little bit better. That doesn't make you feel any better because as soon as you get out of the hot tub, the problem is still there. Right? When it's a spiritual problem, you have to learn how to war in the spirit. Right? We need to learn how to rely on God in these times. Now, first scripture I want to share with you in John chapter 16, starting in verse 7. Jesus is talking to his disciples. Right? And he says this. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He wants to give someone to us that uh, can assist us in our daily lives. There's nothing greater than having a helping assistant. Now, why was Jesus' big plan 
to lead his disciples after they just got things going. I mean, they were, the fire was just starting. They were just leaving, and he sends them the comforter. Why was the Holy Spirit, why was a comforter the big exit plan? Why was this God's big plan for his people? I can think of a million other things that he could have did. Why did he send them some money? Some resources? Some favor with the people? Some earthly influence? Maybe nine lives because they're constantly getting stoned. Maybe they did a million other things, but he sent them a comforter. And here's the answer why. Endurance. Amen. It's endurance. That's right. It's endurance. Amen. He said, you're in but not of this world. I'm not going to remove you from where you are, but I'm going to give you everything that you need to make it through. Amen. And that's what it's all about. The devil will give us plenty of opportunities to quit. He'll try to come in, try to uh, uh, trip you up, try to get you off course. But let me tell you something. That is not God's plan. And if we walk in lockstep with the Holy Spirit... He will encourage us all along the way. If you go out there a little while from now, you're not going to sense the Holy Spirit there. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't. And you know what? We think God has forsaken us. He, we think that we're alone. And we're trying to figure it out all by ourselves. We're not listening to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We're not relying on His support and assistance. And He is there to walk us through. So we have to learn how to get there. Right? We have to learn how to tie in. And I have found that when I don't sense God's presence, right, I just need to get alone with Him. I need to pray. I need to press through. Right? Maybe some of you walked in here, you didn't even feel God's presence in your life this week or whatever. But after that time of worship, which was all about Jesus, getting near to Him, getting in His presence, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden our, our, our spirit begins to awaken. And all of a sudden it becomes sensitive that the Holy Spirit is right there. Wait a minute, I'm not alone. That's why we feel so encouraged when we leave a church service on any given day, right? All of a sudden our spirit is awoken, and now we can recognize that the Holy Spirit is with us. And we feel Him. We're walking down those stairs, and we're zippity do God, right? Because we, we're arm in arm with our advocate. But on Tuesday, it gets a little bit more difficult, and you forget He's there. We've got to press through and recognize that He is there. He wants to comfort us. And that doesn't just mean dry our eyes or alleviate some pain. He wants to walk alongside us as our advocate. Would you let him do that today? Amen. The next is the Holy Spirit gives peace. The Holy Spirit gives peace. You know the definition of peace? Wholeness, wellness, soundness, nothing missing, nothing broken. It is exactly the life that you are looking for. It is exactly what we want. It is the peace that passes all understanding. Right? That is what yeah. we want. Uh, but one thing uh, combats that. From time to time. It's called anxiety. <laughs> Ever experienced that little fella? Anxiety. It's a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. Yeah. Typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Alright? A feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. I think we've all been there. Amen. I think we've all been there. And uh, what do you do with anxiety? Some say you can control it. Others say it just comes. You can't do anything with it. Well, I look to Scripture, and Philippians chapter 4 tells me exactly what to do. Are you ready for the strategy? I'm sure you know the Scripture. But do we live it out? Do we practice it? Listen, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is so good. Listen, Paul writes to the Philippian church and he says, don't be anxious about anything. Paul, well, evidently you haven't experienced any anxiety. You must be living a nice little life there. No, no, no uh, difficulty. What do you mean? Just don't, don't be anxious about anything. Is that a choice? Is anxiety a choice? Mm. Something to think about that. Something to think about that. Now, I, I do know the many facets and, the, and how uh, 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 complex anxiety can be. But on, uh, on an everyday basis, when we begin to worry about situations, Paul says, 
Don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. And it's not just a standalone command that says, don't be anxious. You might be facing something really bad. You might be ex experiencing something that uh, hinders your future. Maybe you got a bad report about your health. Maybe your job was, you were just let go. Or maybe your wages were cut. I mean, that's a lot to bear. There's a lot to bear. Maybe you get bad news about a child. I mean, maybe the, the top the car. Man, the car, why does it keep breaking? Right? It keeps, <laughs> every time. But pain, yeah. Don't be anxious about anything. But it's not a standalone. It's don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, you got to pray. Amen. But in every situation, you got to pray. Amen. What that means is you're not doing it alone. You have an advocate. So as you're walking through life's journey, don't try to do it alone. Turn to your advocate and say, hey, what's going on here? How are you going to help me through this? What do I need right now? Are you going to be an encouragement? Are you going to be a comfort? It's amazing. Have you ever been through the trying and the testing of life and then all of a sudden, Something happens, you're in his presence, and you're like, where is the strength coming from? Where is this clarity of mind coming from? I'm telling you, we've got to be careful with our mental health, uh, especially during times like this, and the things that will weigh you down, right? Uh, we have to choose not to be anxious. So that, what that means is not sit here and rehearse all the details. Let me rehearse all the details. Let me just sit up and just rehearse them, talk to everybody I know. I mean, everybody I know about every detail of my situation. It's prayer request time, but, uh, you know, no, it's not. You're, you're just being anxious. And you're talking to everybody you know, you're putting it online, so everybody will pray for you, knowing you're going through a hard time, and they're all, you know, that's being anxious. Let me tell you, when it says don't be anxious, this is what it means. Situation comes, all of a sudden I'm feeling anxiety. And I say, I choose not to sit in this it, 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 and, and let the uh, situation overwhelm my mind. I am going to give it over to the Lord right now. And you begin to pray about that situation. And then all of a sudden, He brings you comfort. And whereas you were about ready to scream your guts out a second ago, now all of a sudden you're singing praises because you know God has got you back. Amen. Right? All of a sudden, maybe He begins to give you strategies. He helps you understand. Maybe, yeah. maybe He just lets you know, hey, this thing is very temporary. You just wait it out. Let me do the heavy lifting. Right? Yeah. Let me fight your battles. You know, maybe we just learn some things if we take it to the Lord in prayer. Right? So when it says don't be anxious, it says don't entertain anxiety. Right? Don't sit there and think about the situation and what it looks like. Bring it to the Lord in prayer. Right? And by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, don't ever forget about what God has done for you and what He's capable of doing. Present your request to God. And it's not done. If you act now for three easy payments. So, verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. It's more than your mind can even imagine. It's more than you can even fathom, understand, put together, figure out. This peace is out of this world. It's divine. It's heavenly. And it's something that you need and is available to you if you put the anxiety on hold, learn how to pray, and then God shows up, and the peace that passes, all understanding, will do what? Guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. And then finally, the Holy Spirit strengthens the Holy Spirit strengthens. When circumstances and situations challenge us, we can get weak. It comes back to endurance. When you're weak, you can't go on. So this is exactly what the enemy's strategy would be in your life, is to get you to a place of weakness by the constant barrage, so that if you're weak, you won't continue on, and then he's got you, right? He messes with that endurance. Right? He who endures to the end will be saved. But he that doesn't will not be. Right? We need to learn how to continue on each and every day. Amen. So when you're going through these things, you've got to learn how to deal with them properly. Otherwise, your endurance will be shot. When you're weak, you're unable to function properly. You're more susceptible to injury when you're weak. Right? You're, you're unable to help others. We can't focus on the external. We can't focus on what's going outside. We've got to be strong on the inward. Amen. And that is God's promise to us. He gives us the Holy Spirit, our advocate.